Hi, this is Caleb from Practical Dad's Advice, and today we are going to do one of the more difficult things that you can do on DAWS Studio, but it is oh so worth it once you get it right, and that is using the 3D program in order to make hand-drawn renders. No post work, no, uh, or very little post work, um, just a lot of trial and error and a lot of tweaking. Now, this is going to probably take maybe two videos because it is, it is difficult, um, it takes some getting used to, and not only that, but the technology, the, the, the systems we're going to use are not entirely, let, let's just say all the kinks haven't been worked out on them yet. You, you have problems from cameras freezing up to the renderer not the scripted renderer not working and so uh, you should be saving often anyway when doing this save twice as often now all you need is DAW Studio obviously your character and visual style shaders okay that's what I'm gonna be using and camera magic Tunicam Pro okay those are the two things I'm going to be using. You don't even need Photoshop. You don't need anything else but these two things, DAW Studio and whatever it is you're going to be transferring. So let's dive right into it. The first thing you want to do is you want to select your character, go to Surfaces, all right, scroll that down, hit Skins. Skins gives you all of her skin with the exception of her lips it doesn't put the lips or her fingernails now go to content library and it'll be under V so visual style shaders right there there we go now this is all the different types if you want your Sin City noir style here you go um, we're not going to be using that <coughs> We are going to come down and we are going to grab pink. We want pink. That loads up. You have to have the surfaces selected in order to apply the shader. Okay? It will not apply shader to an object, only a surface. So if I just grab her and try to apply it, it doesn't work. I have to grab an actual surface, okay? So now that we have our surfaces, our skins, we got, we've completely changed the material. See? See how different that is from, say, this? Uh, what's a good people? See how you got diffuse color, bump strength, opacity? You know, this is, this is a pretty standard looking material. Well, now you got all of this so what does all this mean okay put simply outline is exactly what it sounds like it's the outline okay so this is the outline in shadow where there's less light this is the color the outline is going to be where there's more light this is the color the outline is going to be now with diffuse this is your base color so where there's less light this is what the base color is going to be. When there's more light, this is what the base color is going to be. Now this, and I don't know how to pronounce that word, you probably are smarter than me and I'm not going to try it. Oh, eh, whatever. This is your transition. So when it's transitioning from here, from this color to this color, it will use this color on the dark side and this color on the light side. Okay, so what we want to do is we, we want to modify this. This, this works just fine, the, the default works just fine, but to really get it a good look we want to modify it a little bit. And it all depends on how you're wanting to play it out, but this is the technique I use. You're watching my video so you get my technique. We're going to change outline dark to pure black. Okay, outline light we're going to actually change to 57, 47, 
48. Okay? So it's more of a gray, reddish gray is what I'm looking for. And I've played around with all these values. That's why I have the values, and you can play around with them too, depending on the style you're wanting. But I've already played around to get this particular look, what I wanted it. So for diffused, for the dark, I want... I'm going to redden it, make it a little more of a peachy. 255 by 176 by 119. Okay? Make it more 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 bit peachy, more beige. That's my dark. Takes a second. And I'm going to save. Save really really often doing this because this stuff will crash your system like you don't believe. So for the light diffused, I'm going to do 250 by 233 by 212. Not a huge difference, but I did change it a little bit because it just looked better to me. For this dark, I'm going to do 253. by 142 by 127 okay got that set and then for light I'm going to do 255 by 239 by 226 All right, and I'm gonna save. <coughs> so, things I have found out, all right, and I mean, you can play around and you can mess with it and do what you want, but I have found that leaving the lips with the standard material, the standard shader, actually works better. And here's why. Once we throw the, the toony cam, the animation, the, the drawn cam on it, it's going to change everything it can to be as cartoony as, as and hand-drawn looking as it can. And by leaving that on it, it gives the, the lips a lot more definition and it makes them stand out a bit more against the skin. And I find that it looks better, that it works better. You may disagree. That's fine. The other thing I tend to leave, depending on the hairstyle, is the hair. I tend to leave it alone. Now, what we do have to do something with is the eyes. For a number of reasons. First off, eye reflection in the hand-drawn style is not your friend. It will turn the eyes black. So we want to go to opacity on the eye reflection and put it to zero. Zero, 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 zero. Even move diffuse color to zero just to be safe. Or diffuse strength. We want nothing on the reflection. We want that to be completely dead. As dead as dead can be. There we are. And then we're going to go to the cornea. Okay. We're going to do the same thing. Zero. Zero, 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 zero. Move that to zero. Don't want it to have any strength whatsoever. Okay. Now we're going to go to the eyeball, which is that word. And we're going to put that as... A very light color so this visual texture gray I'm gonna throw that on there and it loads and I'm gonna save again okay now I'm going to grab the pupils and I want to make her eyes green so I'm gonna grab that green, I'm going to throw those on there. Uh, 
Oh, I meant iris, not pupils. See? Why didn't you stop me? Iris. There we are. Visual color green. There we go. And I'm going to turn the outline to black. And almost black. Alright. So, there we go. That's a good start. Let's grab her shirt. I'm going to leave the pants because I think the pants actually look pretty good. Um, the shirt needs to be fixed though. And I'm going to turn it a slight green. I'm going to go into the outline. Turn that black. And almost black. And on the outline for the shirt, I'm actually going to make the outline start point a bit earlier and the end point a bit later. And that just makes thicker lines. That makes more lines. I found that the shirt doesn't do enough lines. Okay, so this point, save again. And we're going to test. We're going to do a real quick test render. And this is not going to look good. Because we don't have the camera in. We don't have the lights in. This is not going to look good. It's going to look kind of freaky, in fact. What we're going to look for is to make sure that all our um, visual style shaders are in place correctly. And there isn't anything um, that we missed in conversion. That we wanted to convert that we missed. So... Oh, I know what the problem is. 3D delight. There we go. Nope, that's looking good. We got the eyes right. Shirt looks good. Outline looks good. We're, we're going in the right direction here. Let's get a bit more of her. No, we're, we're headed in the right direction. All right. Now we get to move on to the next thing. What's my time at? 12 minutes? Okay. I'm going to go ahead and stop it here and continue in part two. Peace. From Practical Dazz Advice. Peace. Like and subscribe.